everybody, welcome back to Modern Retro Gal. My name is JL and today I am so excited to bring this video to you guys, mainly because I get to um, purge a bunch of stuff that has been in my beauty cabinet and it's just been sitting there and not being used anymore, but I felt bad because some of it is like kind of pricier and I just couldn't bring myself to <laughs> throw it away. So um, these are products that I wanted to love. I wanted to. I tried so hard to love these products. You have no idea. These are products that have great reviews. They're like cult favorites. They came very highly recommended from um, hairdressers that I had been to. But um, these products just didn't work for me in varying degrees of either I really didn't like it, mainly because I didn't feel like it did what the um, product said it was going to do, um, to all the way over to I really kind of hated it, <laughs> like really kind of hated the product and would never use it again, would never recommend it. So here we go. There are some skincare and some hair care products. So let's just get into it. Um, the first one is from Pixie. It is their nourishing cleansing balm with sweet um, almond oil and cocoa butter. This is a balm to oil cleanser. So it looks like this you can see I gave it the old college try in this. Um, I didn't like it. I used this as a makeup remover and it worked very well to break up um, all the makeup on my skin, but it wouldn't come off. <laughs> um, no matter how many times I washed my skin, there was just always something left. And this ended up clogging my pores really badly. Um, I had a lot of blackheads, I had a lot of whiteheads. Um, I couldn't get it out of my pores. And for a while I couldn't figure out what was going on with my skin because I was like, well, my makeup's coming off and I'm using like the same cleanser. So I thought maybe my cleanser wasn't working anymore. And I was trying like all these different things. And it was to the point where there was like this, like, balmy gooey substance like that would come out of my pores like all the time and I think it was this it got to the point where this is the only thing that I could pinpoint that was causing me issues um or that could be the reason why my clogs my pores were so clogged up um I tried several different ways to remove it I tried with a tissue which I think is how they say to remove it. It just says remove with damp face cloth using circular motion. So I tried like rubbing it off with a tissue and then washing my face. I tried with um, a warm washcloth. Um, I tried like with a scrub and then washing my face with my normal cleanser. It just, my pores were clogged. So as soon as I stopped using this, um, it took a few weeks for it to really clear up. But once I did stop using this product um, to remove my makeup I noticed a huge difference in my pores so I know there's a lot of people that absolutely love this and I still see it get recommended all the time as a makeup remover but for me it did not work so buyer beware um, this could end up clogging your pores <laughs> um, but again this it's one of those things you never know this just didn't personally work with my skin and my skin's um, chemistry, but for some people it works really amazing, but I didn't like it, so I finally get to get rid of that. Um, next up is another product from Pixie. It is the Hydrating Milky Mist with Hyaluronic Acid and Black Oat. Now, <laughs> when I purchased this, I thought it was a makeup setting spray because it was right next to Pixie's other two setting sprays and it wasn't like it was more towards the interior of the display with like skincare products over here and then this and then the two setting sprays. It was on the end, on the outside of the display. So I assumed that this was just a hydrating setting spray. So I grabbed it and I was using it as a setting spray and I was like, eh, you know, 
kind of whatever. And then I started looking at it and reading the back of it and realizing that this isn't really a setting spray. It's just a hydrating mist. Um, you're just supposed to be able to use it to add moisture to your skin whenever you need it. You can do it before makeup. Um, you can do it like your toner, so with your um, skincare routine. So I was like, okay, well, let's try it as, you know, how it's supposed to be used. So I had run out of cotton pads for my toner. So I just decided that I would just use it and spray it on my face um, as a toner. And again, I just really didn't feel like it worked that well for my skin. The one thing that I love about it is the sprayer. It puts out the finest mist. Ever. like it is the perfect sprayer I wish all companies that had pumps on them for things that you're supposed to spray out onto your face would use this technology because it is hands down the best I've ever used I don't know if pixie like has a patent on their sprayer but seriously makeup companies duplicate the sprayer because it's amazing um it smells lovely. I really like the way it smells. I just really didn't find that it left my skin feeling that hydrated. I have this issue sometimes with products with hyaluronic acid in them. Some products work really well for me and some hyaluronic acid products don't work as well for me. This is just one that really didn't work that well for my skin. You can see, you know, I've used a good amount of it. It just really didn't work. For me so I'm gonna toss it next up the last product in skincare this is from elf this is the hydrating bubble mask it has this little thing you push it down the product comes out you put it on your skin the gel transforms into bubbles it's supposed to be relaxing hydrating nourishing you're supposed to wait five to ten minutes for the bubbles to begin to dissipate and then massage with fingertips and wash with warm water to remove. This stuff burned my skin like nobody's business. Now, I've talked about my skin before. I don't have particularly sensitive skin. I do have temperamental skin, but not sensitive. I can use the Ordinaries, um, it's the 30% BHA, no problem. I mean, sometimes it's kind of like a little intense tingle, but nothing to the point where I'm like, oh my God, I need to get this off my skin. And when I rinse it off, my skin doesn't look bright red and inflamed. It did with this. I don't even understand. When the bubbles, I waited 10 minutes the first time, tried to massage it into my skin, it was dry. It, it had like dried to my skin. There was nothing to massage. I couldn't massage it. Got my fingers wet, tried to massage it into my skin, didn't work. This was a pain in the butt to try and get off because it just sort of like dried down and it was thick and goopy and it didn't rinse off very well. My skin looked red and inflamed. I tried it again, waiting only five minutes. Same thing happened. I don't like this. I don't get it. I don't think it's that great. I've seen a lot of people love this because of like the bubbling action. I don't like it. Mm -mm, can't. And this was like $14 too. I was like, uh, dear elf, for $14 this shouldn't like irritate and inflame and burn my skin. Thank you very much. That's going in the trash. Um, next up are hair care items. This is from Paul Mitchell. It is the Extra Body Daily Boost Root Lifter. Um, I bought this from a salon, a legitimate salon. Um, any of the salon products, I did get them from legitimate salons. Um, so, hold on, my husband's calling. Hello? Hey, G. Hey. Yeah. Okay. And we're back. So as I was saying, um, I did purchase this from a legitimate salon. So sorry, I had to run downstairs. A little out of breath. Whew. Um, so this wasn't like something that I purchased at 
like um, Marshalls or TJ Maxx, which if you don't know, the reason why they end up getting those products um, and they're able to sell salon products there is they oftentimes um, water them down um, and they're beyond the shelf life that salons are allowed to leave them on the shelf. So not so good salons will empty product out, water it down, and then sell it to places like TJ Maxx and Marshalls. Anyways, um, I was looking for something that was going to be lightweight and add some volume just at the roots for um, my hair. And I've used about used about half of it um, and I just don't like it. I feel like the second day my hair just feels really oily. It just starts to feel like really oily and look greasy um, really quickly and so then it just makes me want to wash, <laughs> I'm still out of breath, um, it makes me want to wash my hair more often and like this is great the first time I use it, like when I wash my hair, spray it in, blow dry it, it's great that first day, but after that, like my hair just ends up looking like a really gross mess. So I don't like it because there's just something about the way it reacts to the oils, my hair's natural oils. It's just not a great mix, so I just don't love it and um... I need to get the Suavecita hair grooming spray because my hair loves that stuff. So again, this is just something that didn't really work with my body's chemistry. It doesn't mean that it's a bad product. It did add volume um, to my hair, but the like second and third day hair just was like a gross mess. So anyways, that's going in the trash too. Another thing that I tried out from Paul Mitchell in the Extra Body range was the Extra Body Daily, Risk, Daily Rinse. This is a conditioner. It's supposed to thicken and detangle. This stuff, again, left my hair the first time I used it, leaving feeling very greasy and gross. Um, I just don't like it. It felt like it, there was just something coating, some kind of coating on my hair. There are other products from Paul Mitchell that I've used before and I absolutely love, but this extra body line it just doesn't work well with my hair. Um, next up is one that makes me so sad. I wanted to love this product so much. It had great reviews. I've used almost the whole th can of it because it wasn't cheap, but it wasn't super expensive. This is from Indie Hair. This is their dry shampoo, Come Clean. Um, this is a great indie brand. They are cruelty free. Um, but I just didn't feel like it worked. Like, I sprayed it into my hair. It didn't leave a lot of, like, heavy white cast on it. Um, but it just, like, my hair just felt like it left residue. Like, it didn't really work that well, um, to kind of clean up my hair. Any oils soak it up. Um, it just, it, like, kind of looked the same, but looked kind of clumpier because there was, like, residue. So, it's not that this is bad. This has great reviews on Ulta, but, um... It just didn't work well for my hair. So, again, I'm going to toss it. I found something else I like better. Whoops. <laughs> I found something else I like better. Next up is a shampoo. Um, again, I saw this line very um, well... What am I trying to say? Um, very highly recommended from hairstylist. This is Provana. This is the Nevo Reparative Sulfate Free Shampoo. Um, it's 100% vegan, 100% gluten free. <sighs> this doesn't have great reviews, but because it came so well recommended from hairstyle from a hairstylist, I a couple of them, I decided to give it a try. The issue that I have with this, this is a 10 ounce, 10.1 fluid ounce or 300 milliliter bottle. This retails for $19.99 at Ulta. I, you can see how short my hair is. I have to use almost an entire palm full of this, like a, probably about half a palm full of this to feel like it's cleaning my hair. If I use a little bit of it, it just sort of disappears in my hair and it still feels dirty and gross. So, because of that, I don't like it. I feel like I have to use way, way, way too much product 
for how expensive this is and mama doesn't have that kind of money all the time with her um so that's why I don't like it I don't feel like it works exceptionally well on my hair or makes it feel any better than any other shampoo that I've tried like drugstore cruelty free shampoo that I've tried I feel like it's kind of on par with those so I know it's a horrible thing to say um, but it just didn't work well for me. Doesn't mean that it's a horrible product overall. It just didn't work well for me. The last product that I have, I don't know if this is cruelty free or not. I was going to check on it. Um, I will check below while I'm editing this and then I will leave it, um, down below whether this is cruelty free or not, but I don't like it. So again, I wouldn't recommend buying it. But this is from the drugstore. This is Salon Graphics Professional Invisible Dry Shampoo No White Powder Residue Spray On Finger or Brush Through for All Hair Types. New and Improved Formula with Antioxidants. I don't know what the formula was like before, but again, I sprayed it on and it was like did more harm than good to my hair. My hair just felt grosser using it. It does have no white residue. I will give it that. It sprays on completely clear, but it just didn't feel like it absorbed any oils and it just left a coating of the product on my hair. So I don't like this. If you see this in the drugstore thinking, I'll go ahead and give it a try. I wouldn't give it a try. Again, there's nothing on the bottle that I can distinguish whether or not it is cruelty free, but I wouldn't recommend it either way. So that is it for me. That is, those are all of the products that I am going to be purging out of my beauty cabinet and I'm so excited. I can't wait to take these down to the trash. It's going to feel so good. There's so much extra room. I have a very small beauty cabinet in my bathroom, so it feels amazing to purge and get rid of some of the junk that I don't like anymore um, that I haven't been liking and has been taking up room so I can get put to new things that I like better. So anyways, that is it for me for today. I hope you all are doing really well. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video or if you found it helpful, please be sure to give me um, a like and a thumbs up on this. Um, please be sure to, if you're new, to subscribe so that you don't miss out on all the fun. Um, and next week, there may be another Tuesday, Friday upload. The kids are off again Monday next week, so I haven't figured out whether or not I will be able to film. It just depends on how the day goes. So anyways, um, again, that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks again for watching and be sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the fun. You can also follow me on all the social medias as Modern Retro Gal. If you have any suggestions for videos, please feel free to leave those in the comment below. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you all again soon.